Hi guys, it's KJ the MIT Tech Guy here, and this is episode two of my Day in the Life of an MIT Student series. If you haven't seen the first one, I really recommend you watch that. I'll have that linked right here. And right now, I'm going to go head to class. During the colder months of the year, we usually take the shuttle system that we have here at MIT called the Safe Ride. But since today seems like a pretty good day, we decided to take a walk instead across the bridge. Also, it seems like there's a pretty good amount of traffic, so we would have just been sitting in traffic anyway. We both just grabbed our breakfast burritos. Now I have to print something for class, and I think Sebastian's gonna just do some work here before class. So my first class today is a 9.30 a.m. class called 16400, which is Human Systems Engineering. This class implies that we have some type of engineering background and tries to apply this to more real-world systems. So we study how humans operate, how they function, and how we can incorporate those thoughts into our designs of different human systems and different systems in general. And since it's an aerospace class, our professor does a pretty good job of relating it to astronauts, pilots, and other aerospace systems. Today we talked a lot about astronauts and how working in confined spaces and in teams affects a mission. Now we're heading off to dynamics for our next lecture. Should be fun. So we just walked out of Dynamics right now. Uh, I'm here again with Sam. How was it? Hey, so it, was, it went pretty well. Uh, we learned about nutation and precession of gyroscopes on the International Space Station. In fact, got a gyroscope right here. Uh, in class today, they all gave us little fidget spinners. So get yourself a major that gives you free fidget spinners. Okay, where are you off to, Sam? So I'm about to head up to Barker to bang out a piece set before I got my music class at 12.30. Uh, this week's been a real grind for me, but it's, you know, almost the end of the semester. We're just pushing through. Light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Oh, yeah. I'll catch up with you later then. All right, catch ya. See, see ya. ya. What'd you get, Timmy? So Timmy just got his Dunkin' Donuts and I wasn't really that hungry because I just had my Anna's burrito. Right now we just found a place in the student center to do some work for the next couple of hours. I'm trying to get a head start on our automatic control piece that that's due tomorrow so I don't have as long of a night as I did in episode one. And I think Timmy's working on his research. Europs are something that I haven't talked about in my first episode, but is a major reason why I chose this school to begin with. Europ is an MIT acronym that stands for Undergraduate Research Opportunity, and it's a great thing in many different ways. First off, if you're thinking about grad school, then you get valuable research experience and you get to work in a lab and you get to see the type of research that you may want to do in the future. Second, it's good to have on your resume research if that's what you want to go in into the future. So they'll know that you're already a dedicated researcher. And lastly, here at MIT, your ops are paid opportunities. So you'll be able to get paid for doing research that you would have liked to do anyway. So I think it's just a win-win-win scenario and it's just a great way for people to do what they're interested in. I've personally worked in the Space Systems Lab on the Zero Robotics program led by MIT. And I've also worked in the Space Propulsion Lab with a graduate student on developing a new rocket fuel for the tiny thrusters the lab is working on. Okay, Humby, what do you think about your ops in general? I mean, they're really cool opportunity for you to get involved. There's a lot of really uh, cool research going on here, from, like space propulsion, all the way to like uh, new airplanes, like the BWB that's sitting over here. So it's really cool to get involved and actually get hands-on experience, right? Everything's all pretty in the classroom. Uh, the theory is always right. Right, but when you start making things in real life, you find out that you know, there are some things you got to compensate for in your design and uh, what you can and can't build. Right now it's about 4 o'clock and I'm heading to meet up with Sebastian to go to the gym, which is right here.
Here at MIT, we are challenged every day mentally to our max capabilities in our problem sets and in classes in general. So students here try their best to find other things to mentally de-stress. For me, I like staying active, going to the gym or playing basketball because it takes my mind off of classes and my mind has a chance to relax. What do you do to de-stress, Humby? I mean, the big, I think the biggest thing is to find something you enjoy. For example, I like read a lot of books on subjects I'm interested in. Even though they're a little bit like technical, it's still something I enjoy and it kind of changes the pace of things. Sometimes it gets stressful, so the biggest thing is to always keep uh, that one thing in your life, whether it be reading, working out like KJ does. Yeah, we just have to be in the right state of mind, if that makes sense. If classes bog us down, if we're too stressed, we won't be able to function that well and we'll actually do even worse than if we just studied nonstop all the time. So I just had a pretty good dinner and linked up with Timmy and Sebastian. We're gonna try to get a lot of work done so we can finish this automatic control piece set. So we've been working for quite a bit now and Sam and it's I been, actually uh, got hungry. It's been pretty rough. Yeah, we need a little boost to get us going here. So it's yeah, past we, midnight, we got several hours left here. It's not good. We're probably gonna be working for a good amount of time now. So we gotta load up for tonight. It's like 30 degrees right now. It's so cold, so cold. But luckily, uh, Verge is still open for another couple hours. Yeah, so back to good old Laverdi's. This is where it's at. Let me reiterate the fact that working with friends within your major is so beneficial, especially at a school like this where P sets take a long time to do. Instead of just sitting and struggling on a problem for hours, just not really going anywhere, being able to bounce ideas off of someone else really helps push that P set forward and actually allow you to finish it in a timely manner. Also, hopefully you become good friends with those people that you work with and PSET times don't become so dreadful at that point. You can actually talk about your days and catch up and just have someone to talk to, which is always nice. So we just about finished everything that we had to do for tonight. It's, it's still really cold. Man. Yeah, it's really cold and it's almost 2 a.m. So. Uh, Timmy and I called an on-demand safe ride, which will take us to wherever we want to at this time. And I'm about to walk back to Massey, which is like two minutes away. To be honest, this is one of the earliest P-Set nights we've had within the past couple of months because we're always working till pretty late hours, but I'm happy I'm about to head home right now. Obviously not all MIT students do exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but hopefully taking you around today gave you an idea as to what you can do as a student. Yeah, I did attend classes and yes, I did finish a hard piece set, but I was also able to go to the gym and I was also able to have dinner with my friends. And throughout today, I can honestly say that I never felt too bogged down or too stressed even when I did have an assignment due tomorrow and I'm actually very happy about that. Let me know when and what you'd like to see in an episode 3 of a day in the life video. Right now I'm gonna head to sleep and I'll see you guys in the next one.